Later on in this video, I am going to show you the most amazing chart that you have ever seen. And if you have any interest in precious metals whatsoever, this chart will make you drool and you're going to want to forward this video to all of your friends. Anyway, I need to give you a little bit of background before I show you that chart. So I've generated this chart on stock charts and it's the price of gold from 1970 until today. So it incorporates both of the bull markets. The famous bull market of the 70s in this red rectangle here and the current bull market uh, in this blue rectangle. And notice one thing right away. Uh, this rectangle here is very tall and skinny and the current one is sort of short and fat. Now, one of the things that I'm going to talk about here, uh, I'm going to, I'm incorporating this bull market all the way back to 1999 because the price of gold sort of put in a double bottom. But if you take from 1980 until today, the very lowest price was uh, $253 in 1999, and then it was 256 in 2001. And so uh, I'm including 1999 in this bull market. Also notice that this, these bull markets have a couple of phases here. This is what I, I call this an entire bull market. I don't break it up, but within this secular bull market, there is a cyclical bear market. And uh, I call this a mid-cycle correction. I don't call it, I, I believe that this is one bull market. If, if I had any inclination of where gold and silver could go at the beginning of the 70s, I just would have been buying all the time because I'm just not smart enough to trade these things and know that that is the peak when it comes and sell or go short and then buy back in or go long right there and ride this up. And I, you know, <clears throat> if anybody does, they're lucky. If they tell you they can do it, they're lying. Uh, it's just, it's not possible. Uh, you know, you can measure whether gold or silver are overvalued or undervalued when you measure them against other assets. But um, trying to guess where the top is when they're sort of, uh, their value is not, uh, when, it, when they're still undervalued compared to other assets, trying to guess these tops is almost impossible. So anybody that was able to sell their gold in August 2011 or their silver, in uh, April of 2011. Good for you. If you were able to buy back in uh, in December of 2015, good for you. Uh, you're better at it than I am. Uh, I just, you know, I, I use this whole thing. I know there's something wrong with the world economy and that we've got something really big coming at us. And I want to be protected from it and benefit financially from it. I am not looking forward to the world, uh, the future, as it's going to be after this next crisis happens. Uh, but, uh, so we've noted that there's this uh, three-phase uh, cycle in this run-up in this bull market in the 70s. And if you know anything about Elliott Wave, I am not an expert on, on charting. I dabble at it and I know that there's some different wave configurations uh, there's a three way three waves and there's five waves uh, this would be called an a b c wave so you've got the a wave the b wave the c wave notice that the the peak of the a wave here uh, and the beginning of the b wave is centered right in the middle of this uh, rectangle in both time and in magnitude. And here in this blue rectangle, uh, it's way up near the top. Actually, I drew the top of this blue triangle up too high because it goes way past, further past this price, the peak price than it does here. So it's way near the top and it's a little bit over toward the right side of uh, this, uh, the price action here. Now, if we were to put that in the dead center, that would mean this rectangle would go way up here and it would go a little bit further out. And so if that were the center and you took this A, B, A wave, B wave, and C wave, the end of the C wave would be way up here somewhere. And so um, with that Elliott wave 
uh, analysis in mind and the fact that we're uh, picking the beginning of this bull market as the very lowest price between 1980 and the year end today, which was $253 in the year uh, 1999, it was $256. This is slightly higher uh, in 2001. So for Elliott Wave analysis, I'm picking the absolute lowest price between 1980 and today in this cycle. And so we're going to go to the other chart now, the amazing chart. This was put together by my uh, chart guru, the chart master, uh, Alan Hibbard. And uh, it's, it's, you're going to find this absolutely amazing. Um, so what we've got here, oh, I'm going to go back to the other chart for just a second. Notice that this is on a logarithmic scale. Um, from 100 to 200 is the same distance as from 200 to 400 and 400 to 800. So we are measuring the percentage of change with the, you know, if the uh, price doubles, then it'll be the same distance for the next price doubling and the same distance for the next price doubling. So we're not measuring the amount of change, we're measuring the percentage of change, basically. So we go back to the amazing chart, the chart that will make you drool. It just, you, you got to watch the rest of this video. Um, and this is also logarithmic. And what we have here is on the bottom scale, you've got the 1970s bull market from 1970 to 1980 and from 35 bucks an ounce to 800. It actually peaked at 873, but the scale goes to 875. And so uh, in that bull market, uh, we went up 25 times the original price. Now here, there's a question mark. Is it going to be 36 times? So there's, there's something uh, amazing that you're going to see here. Now up here, we have the scale of the current bull market. And this, you'll notice, only goes to 2009. And then from 250, uh, this is also a logarithmic uh, price scale. But Alan made me these really slick little tools here. I can compress the timeline and I can, I, I can expand or compress it and I can expand or compress the, uh, the magnitude of this move, the price. And so let's uh, um, compress a little bit of, you know, this is going in 10% uh, in increments of compression. And so what we're seeing here, there is the peak of that A wave. And what I'm going to do is line it up with this peak, the highest price of the A wave of the 70s bull market. And that requires 2.42 uh, is the number that gets them to line up exactly. And so I've got to change this from uh, 0.1 to 0.01 now. And there's 2.42, and these peaks are exactly lined up, as you will see in a second. And then I'm going to start uh, compressing the price scale. And this amazing thing happens, and when you get to 1.8 times, uh, they line up exactly. And look at this. This is, you know, like I said, Mark Twain is often quoted, but there is no uh, evidence that he ever said this, that, uh, but he is said to have said that uh, history never repeats, but it rhymes really well. And then Eugene O'Neill said that there is no past or present, only the future happening over and over again now. And <laughs> Look at the correlation here. This is like totally insane. The correlation in the 70s bull market and, and today's bull market is just absolutely scary. This is so spot on. Um, I didn't have a correlation run on this, but this would be in the very high 90, you know, the 0.97 uh, something or 0.98 something, or I have no idea, but it would be almost... Uh, a perfect fit. And we're actually where we, we you know, this includes the uh, price data to the end of last month. Um, so to S September 30th, I believe. 
and we are actually a little bit lower than the, you know, if this was history repeating, uh, we'd be way up above 2000 right now, and we will be in the future. So if you're watching this in the future, sorry, I just dated the video. Uh, but we've got a long ways to go. And this is suggesting that the target date, that, this, the, that if history continues to repeat so exactly, that the target date will be November 9th, 2023, so sometime in uh, late 2023. But wait, there's more. I'm going to delete something I did here to cover that up. The price target is $11,250 per ounce. If history repeats, we've just got this greatly amplified echo of the past. So it's taking 2.42 times longer in duration, but it's 1.8 times greater in magnitude. Now, there's even more to this. That means that the time remaining, the remaining gains, and the remaining yield, there's, you know, this is as up of September 25th, 2020, the price was $1,866 then. Uh, and uh, we've got 3.1 years remaining, six times the gains remaining. You know, uh, Dave Morgan says 90% of the move comes in the last 10% of the time. I've said it many times. Other people have said this. Uh, so uh, we, and, and what's interesting, you know, this is <laughs> the remaining yield, 77.8% per year. <laughs> per year. This is like totally insane. Uh, now, I'm not saying this is going to happen. This is just if uh, the, you know, we've got uh, 21 years of time in this, uh, the green bull market here, the current bull market, uh, and it's echoing the uh, 10 years of time in this, uh, the, the 70s bull market. Um, now, that may not continue, but in the 70s bull market, we didn't have the world's central banks printing their currency into oblivion. We didn't have uh, the global stock markets all uh, so incredibly overvalued. They were overvalued in 66. They had been deflating. Actually, they were going sideways while, the, while inflation was raging, uh, causing the stock markets to become very undervalued. So they were undervalued at this point in time. Uh, real estate uh, had bled off a lot of its value. It hadn't kept up with inflation. Uh, the precious metals were the stars of the show in the 70s because of that dramatic inflation. While real estate and stocks went sideways, precious metals turned in this amazing performance. I'll make a video on that uh, later. But if this echo continues to play out, uh, we'll see this $11,250 gold but that's if you don't have countries printing their currencies into oblivion and you don't have everybody rushing toward the safety of gold if the markets uh, crash or collapse. And if they do start to crash or collapse, the world's central banks will rush in to save, not us, to save the markets and cause a wealth transfer from the poor and the middle class to the uber rich. So I want to thank you for watching this and I want to thank Alan Hibbert again for making this amazing tool for me that I could share with you. So will gold go up 36 times uh, from its bottom to its top? If, if history repeats, it will. Uh, however, there's, you know, I used to say uh, history always repeats, but with little twists. And what are the twists? Markets are overvalued. We've got currencies uh, doing emergency maneuvers because of the uh, global health problem, and we've got uh, this printing into oblivion. And so um, I think that this is probably going to be a low side target. <laughs> what do you think? What does this all add up to you? So I want to thank you so much for watching, and please, uh, if you got anything from this, if you enjoyed it, if you were blown away by it, if you're drooling over it like I do, 
<laughs> then please share it with uh, anybody you think might be interested. Uh, our channel is being throttled lately, and we could, we could actually use the help. I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.